Welcome to The Crafty View. I'm Diane Williams, the host for this show. And this time I'm interviewing Arlene Harrison. And she's a member of the Craftsman's Guild and she works with polymer clay. We're gonna see some very interesting things that she does with clay. Not your average polymer clay artist. She is stretching the boundary, she's a trendsetter, and I can't wait to start this interview. Hello, Arlene Harrison. How are you today? I'm great, how are you? I'm doing fine. We're here at the Craftsman's Guild today to watch you do a demonstration. And so you're a member of the Guild. And how long have you been with the Guild? Oh, goodness. Um, close to 10 years, I think. 10 years, okay. Yeah. Yes, and you're working with polymer clay. Yes. And, and so you've been a member of the Guild 10 years, but how long have you been working with clay? Since 2008. Okay, very nice. And you've got a lot of things laid out here. I want to know more about it. How did, what got you interested in working with Paula McClay? Well, it was actually kind of a weird little thing. Um, I was a painter for close to 30 years, decorative painting. And I got arthritis in my hands. My doctor says you need to be working with something that uses your hands rather than keeping them in a fixed position. So I went to Hobby Lobby play was on sale and I said well you know it's worth a try I mean how hard can it be right <laughs> I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I found out it, it wasn't as easy as it looked but um, that's how I got into it was just really to solve a problem mm -hmm. and I I tell people I don't create because I want to or create because I have to it's just a ingrained yeah, part of my DNA, I guess. So I couldn't paint anymore, not to the degree that I was. So I mm -hmm. had to find a way to express that creative spirit. So, and tell me about what you're doing right now. Okay, I am. I've made a marble sheet of clay using the blue and white, and just marbled it together for a background. I don't like plain backgrounds, they're just, you know, flat and boring. Mm -hmm. And then I had, over the years I've made clay, you know, clay canes. And these are like the cookies you buy at Christmas that has the pattern that runs all the way through. You got the rose on that end and that end. And every slice is gonna give you that same rose. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the leaves. And then just, this is a little detail that just adds interest in the background. Oh, I can't even imagine what it's like to make one of these leaves. I made those last night in about 30 minutes. Really? Because <laughs> I was low. <laughs> mm hmm And so, okay, so now I see how you get the yeah. leaves and even the um, log, uh, tree, tree. Um, the little swirls. And swirls. And those are done with translucent clay, so when this bakes, all you'll have is the white circle. You won't have that milky look behind oh, there. Oh, okay. It will be clear, or okay. close to clear. And then what do we have here? That is uh, a collection of my canes that I've made over mm -hmm. the years. Some are bits and pieces, some are longer pieces that I've just made. Um, like this little piece, that's all that's left of it. Mm -hmm. It's a sad little cane right now, but It'll actually be enough to make um, a couple of ornaments, so. Mm -hmm. Now, I've worked with clay before, and the question that I have, and what others may have, is I see a nice collection that lasts a long time, but what's gonna preserve that clay so it doesn't get really hard? The clay comes in blocks like this. Mm -hmm. And if your clay gets hard, and for one thing, when I go into the store to buy, I pinch it. If it won't give, I don't buy it. That means it's already been on the shelf too long or it's been exposed to heat at some point. It is heat cured, therefore you don't wanna leave it in a hot car in the middle of the day. 
but uh, if you can pinch that clay, mm -hmm. it'll be soft enough to use. If you have some that sat around forever and a day, um, and you still need to use it, then it takes a little more work. Mm -hmm. I have uh, a package of Mold Maker from Sculpey Products, and you take just a little bit of it, put in a, chop up your clay in slices or chunks or whatever, and put them in your bag with a little bit of that mold maker and bang the stew out of it. Bang the stew. Then you can get yep. your frustrations out. You yep. don't have to argue with your spouse. <laughs> you don't have to beat up on the children. Just tell the children to come sit around when they misbehave and say, this is your time out. Now watch this. Yeah. See, what, <laughs> see what might happen if you don't behave. <laughs> but that generally will loosen the clay up enough mm -hmm. to where you can work it. And you just keep processing it through the pasta machine to get it to a softer condition to where you can work with it. My grandmother once gave me a pasta machine. I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> I didn't, didn't have one when I started. So so you have an electric one. I've seen the, the kind you crank with your hand. Not but only do I have an electric one, I stole the pedal off my um, scroll saw. <laughs> to use so that I don't even have to hit the switch. I'm, I'm really spoiled. okay. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. So I see you have your razor cutter here and you've got mm. some other tools. Okay, this one is just a uh, regular firm blade, which you mm -hmm. need for slicing the clay. The slice the this cutter. one is a tissue blade and it is extremely sharp, but yes. when you're wanting to slice, little bitty canes like this. You mm -hmm. want a thin slice. Oh, beautiful. And that gives you the ability to do that without mm -hmm. having to put pressure on it and distorting your cane. You're messing up your slice, so. Well, you've really got me thinking. I'm a mixed media fiber artist. And for those mixed media fiber artists out there who like to incorporate different things into your designs, Sometimes we make tapestries and wall art and that sort of thing. A nice thin slices like that can be uh, incorporated into your mixed media designs. How fabulous is that? There are people who actually make buttons out of the polymer clay and they say that they're fully washable. Mm -hmm. That uh, they don't dry them, but they do run them through the washing machine without any problem. So okay. I haven't done it, but... <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know that it has been done, so. Now, this is really unique. Now, what we're looking at is Christmas tree ornaments, which are not unique in and of themselves. But when you can make Christmas tree ornaments using polymer clay, and is that beads along with it or paint? That is, is that this is ball chain. This yes. is just a regular little gold chain. Okay. And I just wanted something to separate the mm -hmm. um, sections. So talk about that process. We're looking at some silver balls here on the table that you, I guess you get those at the craft store. Yeah, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, whoever's selling them. Mm -hmm. These are actually from last year. Uh, first thing I did was I took my little template that I, I made after I got tired of trying to figure out where the center was and getting it wrong. There. You put it on there like that and then you just mark because you need to know where that center point is. Mm -hmm. That's where all of your spirals are gonna end. Yes. But that's the, the first part. And let me see. These I actually put them, it's gonna get noisy for just a minute because I need to put this on a backing sheet. I roll it fairly thin. But I want it a little thicker to put on my piece. So I'm gonna lay it on here, roll it down, and then cut around that.
Then I'm gonna take my glue, which this is another weird thing that we polymer clay artists discovered. One of the greats in the industry discovered it and shared it with us. Genesis paint is a heat set artist's color, you know, paints. The clear medium cures at the same temperature that the polymer clay does. So if you take this and use it as a glue, it bonds with the clay yes. and holds it to the piece that you're working with. And see, that brings that right down to that center, mm -hmm. that little bobble there. And your template that you have helps you cut out those pieces like that. Yeah, that took right a lot shape. of trial and error. <laughs> I bet it did. <laughs> to get it to where. And it's still not perfect because, like you, you saw there, I had to cut off a little piece because it had stretched. Palmer clay is very flexible. And yes. it does have a lot of stretch to it. Mm-hmm. But that puts you a nice piece on there, and then you just follow it with all the way around. Fabulous. That will go between the flowers. Okay. Oh, yes, I see. So when we see flowers here on this mm -hmm. orange piece, she's creating the pieces that go between. Right in here. And it went through a process in the spaghetti uh, machine to get it flat like that and almost a gradient of color. It just adds interest so that you don't have just a flat color. It really does. And you just follow mm -hmm. the curve of that first piece. Yeah. How long does something like this stay in the confectioner's oven, which is over there? Well, that depends on the artist. I prefer to leave mine in for a full hour. Really? I put it in let it bake and let it cool in the oven. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be in there that long. But if the oven, okay, I've got a difference in thickness here. Mm. Does it bake for an hour or is, the process, is that the entire process, baking and cooling? Um, I bake for an hour. Okay. got these pieces thinner than I intended, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go back and put another piece on it because they all need to be the same level. There's mine. And you eyeball it and get a feel for it as well. You can because when you lay it up next to the other one, if it's not level, it just won't look right. Mm -hmm. And since I hate to sand, <laughs> I try to make it as even as possible. Yes. <clears throat> okay. And with this process, what you've created thus far stays on the ball. We don't have to worry about it getting too hard before the next piece comes on. It's very forgiving and it's waiting on you. It's going to stay soft until I put it in the oven. Okay. How close do you try to get each piece, edge to edge? I try to put them right next to it, and then when I get to the end, if I've got a gap, I rearrange. Okay. That's why I'm saying it, it took some adjusting to get that, uh, mm -hmm. the, the pattern anywhere close. <laughs> it wasn't a one and done process. And because it's on that ball, it has a little bit of um, 
That gives you a little give if you have to push the edges closer to okay. one another. It's firm enough that it, that ball is not going in. Mm-hmm. So, I try to line it up to where I've got the top written in there so that I can tell where my light spots yes. need to be. And that helps keep it kind of centered. Now, are you a person that's going to use every little bit of clay, nothing goes to waste? How does that work? Well, you see all this stuff? Yes. That's scrap. Okay. That's all my leftover stuff. Okay. And I use it for the underpieces, the sculpture. Oh. Um, on some of my ornaments, I make a mm -hmm. form that I start with. And... So yeah, no play ever goes wasted. Great, great. And now, are you at Chimneyville most years? Because that's gonna be the question people have. They love to get new Christmas ornaments and you know, after five, 10 years. And then uh, some people like their ornaments to be monogrammed. Is there anything you do to put initials on there, family names or anything? I have some. Uh, two different ornaments that I do put the, the names on. One is a mitten mm -hmm. that has the white cuff, and the other is a Santa hat that has the white cuff. Oh, so can you do, you said the, did you say mitten or the, you know the booty that they use, and they, they, they usually are cloth booties hung on the, on the fireplace. Can you do something like that, stockings for, for with polymer clay? I can. And then a little hole in it and they can hang it on a, a little hook. Wow. Well, on my ornaments that are flat, let's see. These are some that I'm gonna work on with. If I get all these balls covered. Mm hmm But this uses the same process. And it has a little gold loop. So the same process as Christmas stockings. We can do this with the yes. crosses. Mm -hmm. Anything oh. that I can draw, I can make into an ornament. Because I will develop a template similar to this. So my question is, looking at these that we can hang, it's got a wire hanger there. Is the entire item polymer clay? And I love the back yes. on this one. Everything so, except the uh, wire hanger. Except the wire clay. hanger. Nice. Do these go in the oven for an hour as well? Yes. And this is your initials down there. My name. Your, oh, not your initials, your full name is on mm -hmm. there. So, very, and you must have a stamp to do that. I do. I got that from another polymer clay artist a lot of years ago. Yeah, that's great. But you don't do anything to initial your bulbs, though. Your Christmas ornaments. Oh, okay. Yeah, everything has my name on it. Somewhere. That is fabulous. Yeah, you gotta do that. We have some great things over here as well. I'd love to talk about the process to doing things like this. Uh, the mini mosaics are one of my best sellers. Um, they're a good priced item because they're, I sell them for $20. Okay. And that, I probably have that much more in them, but it's kind of like a, a leader in a, Mm -hmm. Do you have a mold for this tree ornament? Nope. You actually have a pattern that you, you made your own pattern. I started with a, a cookie cutter. Oh. The, uh, the outline is a cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. And then these are little cutters, individual cutters. Um, I made a cutter to create the opening for the crystals and those mm -hmm. are glass crystals you have to use glass because you're putting it in the oven oh it has to be able to withstand the heat okay 
And let's see, the spiral in the middle is <clears throat> was just a, a dot, and then I I made that stamp or that impression two mm -hmm. years ago, and it's still one of my favorites. Nice, very nice. Yeah. And then when we look at something like this, there's a lot going a uh, detail here. We've got <laughs> let's see the treat box. Oh. <laughs> And you make the hat and everything. Yes. You just kind of hand structure, oh, hand build, as they hand say. Hand build it, yeah. I the, love his eyes and personality. <laughs> the um, pumpkin itself is built on a yogurt jar. Huh? Um, a yogurt jar. Yeah, it's the O-U-I. We? we? Mm -hmm. Yogurt. Oh, I, oh yes. I, someone gave me a collection of those, and I'm like, what am yeah. I going to do with these? You can go and give them to me. That's what you're going to do. That's what I can do. <laughs> Are you local? I am. Okay. Star. Well, Star, Mississippi. Enough, yeah. Okay, the home of... Faith Hill. Faith Hill, yes. <laughs> That's what we're known for. Yes, these are just fabulous. And these are also on the yogurt jars. Mm -hmm. Great. I really have enjoyed this. If people wanted to know how to get in touch with you, um, do you have a website? Are you on Facebook and other social medias? I'm on Facebook, Arlene Spates Harrison. Uh, I am on Instagram. I think it's Arlene Harrison 356. And I have an Etsy shop, Harrison Holla at Etsy.com. Say that again so we can... Uh, Harrison Hollow. Hollow, okay. Yeah, at Etsy.com. My, my business name is Harrison Hollow. H-O-L-L-O-W. Okay. And and your Facebook page is... Uh, One more I time. I have a business page on Facebook, but I don't do much with it. Okay, okay. So, yeah. And then you have items... Here at the Craft Center at 950 right. Rice Road, we have a gallery straight over there in the corner. Uh, you could go in there at any time. She has work in there as well. Is there anything else you want to tell our viewers about your work? Just that it's very satisfying. It's very relaxing. It keeps me calm. <laughs> when things are stressing me out, I just go to the studio and lose track of time so you have a studio is it in your home yes, in or home. okay yeah. okay and that's where all your real supplies right the breadth of what you work with is there right okay and did you have a lot of other tools in your studio i see a number of tools here but oh, um, i have <laughs> one thing that you find about artists of any variety we collect tools yes so whatever the newest thing is, we're going to have. Okay. I'm not as bad as I used to be. I, I know enough about what I'm doing now that I will mm -hmm. evaluate, okay, is this something that would be really useful to me, mm -hmm. or is it just something that I can use, something I've already got to do? Yes. yes. So, yeah, I have a lot of tools. <laughs> well, wonderful. <laughs> Well, Arlene Harrison, thank you so much for being on The Crafty View. <laughs> we love you. We love our craftspeople. And have a great day, everyone.